Welcome back AP Calculus AP students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School with our final video that covers topic 3.6, higher order derivatives. We're going to take a look at number four, which ooh, you can see I'm sweating it out there. This is definitely a little bit tougher second derivative, um, but not one that is impossible. It does involve a trig function, maybe not our favorite trig function. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Our example four says find y double prime of t if y of t is defined to be cosecant of t. And I told you, cosecant of t, probably our least favorite trig function, right? If we were to poll everyone in the United States or across the world, what is your least favorite trig uh, expression? And probably cosecant would be the winner every time. So what you want to do with this, first of all, is you have to understand that you can't jump straight from y to y double prime. You have to get to y single prime first. And that's going to require just memorization. We talk about that all the time to my students at Avon High School. It doesn't really take a lot of intelligence to memorize something, but it does take some effort. And you might have to find yourself finding ways that you can help that process. Some of you memorize things faster than others. So making physical flashcards out of cutting up index cards or using other kinds of online means like Quizlet or other uh, types of electronic flashcards would be the way to go. You have to know the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant times cotangent. There's no substitute for that. So now we have this wonderful combination of two trig functions that are being multiplied together. So if we want to take the derivative of this, we have to now use the product rule. So we got ourselves sort of in a, a little bit of a, of a rut here because we have a little bit more difficult process when we take the derivative the second time. So we're going to go ahead and start by taking the derivative of the cosecant. It already has a negative in front, so I'll drop that down. And then when we take the derivative of the cosecant, it's like, whoa, been there, done that. That's what we just did initially. So you just really have the negative cosecant of t times the cotangent of t. And I might want to add, I'm putting parentheses around my t just to organize things a little bit better. There's nothing against you, you know, not putting that there, but it looks, I think, a little bit better sometimes when we handwrite that. So there's the derivative of the first term. That would be multiplied by the second term. According to the product rule, we would then add the first term, negative cosecant of t, and that would be multiplied by the derivative of the last term, the derivative of cotangent, which is negative cosecant squared. Now that that's all taken care of, you essentially have your derivative. You might want to clean it up. Let's say this is a multiple choice question. It certainly would be cleaned up a bit. And really all that's going to happen is you see a double negative here. There are two instances of cotangent that can be multiplied together. So you could write this as cosecant of t times the cotangent squared of t. That makes it look a little bit better. And then as far as this last term is concerned, well, we have a cosecant and a cosecant squared. They can be multiplied together to make a cosecant cubed. And of course, as you would probably predict, the two negatives could cancel out. So this would be a perfectly acceptable solution for the second derivative. Other alternatives, yeah, I suppose you could factor out a cosecant and go from there, but I'm not going to worry about that for the purpose of this video. I wanted you guys to uh, see what would happen if you found yourself in a position where the second derivative was just a little bit more difficult to take than the first derivative. I hope this video helps out, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.